going to be very interesting to see what happens in time with these large global institutions. And I say that because I think we're right now in a period of time where um, how we identify what's global is really changing. Um, when a lot of these institutions were created, it was in um, like the 1940s and 50s, and, and um, the world was a much smaller world, and it was actually seen as kind of a revolutionary thing now to start having these global organizations that can come together and create these um, these plans of action, you know, that will um, will be working above governments, you know, with a kind of a larger goal mm -hmm. that go above the state. And, but our world has changed now, and we are now in a, a world where um, a lot more people, first of all, have access to um, to communication, and are I think we're in a period of time too where um, power is really shifting, and where that's heading, um, I don't think any of us know right now because we're in the midst mm -hmm. of that transition. And um, you know, I think the the power of the traditional state. Mm -hmm. Meaning, local, you know, traditional uh, national governments is in transition, and I think we're seeing that right now, like in, in the Middle East, in so many movements where things are really starting to generate these real, like, democratic movements happening from um, from people that are mm -hmm. organizing now through the use of new technology. Mm -hmm. And so, how will history judge it? I think that they're going to history will judge these organizations as. Um, part of a process, part of a, okay. a process that's bringing our world into a, a much more global world. Mm -hmm. I think there's going to be a lot of critique of these organizations. Mm -hmm. um, I think, you know, there is good intentions behind some of these, like the United Nations, I think, um, has done some phenomenal work, but I think it's, there are certain things that it's not able to really be effective. Mm -hmm. Of course. And, um, and yet, for right now, it's kind of the best instrument that we have right now uh -huh. for being able to bring these, mm -hmm. these um, kind of global actors together above and beyond the state. You know, you do need mm -hmm. some kind of, of entity that can say, we stand for something that's much larger, you know, mm -hmm. something we, all these countries have to be accountable to. So I think that's what we have for right now, but I, I think um, we're in a process where we're going to be hopefully finding something that's going to be working better in mm -hmm. a much more connected world, interconnected mm -hmm. world. And do you have a sense of what that would be? Um, I don't know right now what that would mm -hmm. be. I mean, I think, um, you know, if, if, I, if I had the ideas, um, <laughs> I might be out there creating it, but I, I don't know. You know, I, I haven't actually given it real thought as to what that's going to look like, but I do think um, I think it's going to have something that's going to have a lot more interactive elements from people I think um, you know the world that we had existed in several decades ago even mm -hmm. 15 years ago 20 years ago um, was again a world that did not have such easy access mm -hmm. to new ideas different ways of things being done it's remarkable now how Bhutan, which is a country that was completely closed off and, and mm -hmm. only got television in 2000 or 1999, now people are on Facebook and they're having access to everything in the world. Mm -hmm, and and people from Bhutan can be sharing information with people from mm -hmm. Syria and from Brazil and mm -hmm. the U.S. And, and that, I think, is ultimately going to lead us to a very different expectation and set of values that um, we don't even know yet mm -hmm. what that's what the, how that's going to manifest and how that's going to unfold